Okay. All right. Seeing that it's seven o'clock, I'd like to call the October 29th, 2024 Summersworth School Board meeting um, to order, please. Can I have a roll call? Maggie Larson. Here. Carrie Clark. Here. Sarah O'Brien Hart. Here. Crystal D. St. Croix. Here. Marsha Brown. Here. Barbara Wentworth. Here. Bridget Jamison. Here. Gemma Soldati. Here. Full board. All right. Please join me in the pledge. Thank you, welcome. At this time, any comments by visitors? Any comments by visitors? We'd be happy to hear you. I am seeing none. Any initial comments by board members before we begin the portion of our meeting? Okay, seeing none. Uh, moving to the consent calendar. Hopefully you've all been able to review the consent calendar. We have three items, our uh, board meeting minutes from October 15th, our enrollment report, and our district calendar of events. Thank you for that. It was good to see kind of the whole district kind of itemized like that. Uh, what is the wish of the board to adopt the consent calendar as presented here? I motion to adopt the consent calendar as presented. I have a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion about anything? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. We've adopted that. We made ad adjustments. All right. Going to our reports. Agenda item 4.1, our student representative report. Welcome, Thomas Reese. Long overdue. We're very happy to have you here. And make sure your microphone is on and it has a little green light and take it away. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll start with Idlehurst. Uh, the Idlehurst Reading Committee is recognizing all those students who read over a thousand minutes during the summertime. They're bringing 25 students to Cinco's Cantina in Rochester on October 23rd to watch a tortilla cooking demo and taste testing. <laughs> uh, they're starting off to a great year. Uh, they've earned all their points by being kinder than they need to be. They will be having a fall festival on Friday, November 1st. They would love volunteers, so please reach out to Ms. Coco if you would like to volunteer. Uh, the PTA will be hosting a trunk or treat at Idlehurst the night of November 1st. Teachers and parents of Idlehurst and Maple Maplewood will be filling their trunks and decorating their cars for all families in the Idlehurst parking lot. This will be from 5 to 6, and on November 8th, Idlehurst will be hosting their 7th annual Veterans Day celebration to honor veterans and those who are currently serving. At Maplewood on October 24th, October 24th our whole third grade went on a field trip to Strawberry Bank Museum. November, f November 1st will be Halloween dress up day and uh, they also will be holding their annual veterans breakfast the morning of November 8th. Our band and chorus directors will be ho holding an open house concert on November 8th, uh, on November 14th at 5.30 p.m. At the middle school, the 24-25 year is off to a great start. They hosted their first dance and it earned $942. Uh, on October 25th, the uh, was the SMS Halloween dance and the costumes were great. And we finished our beginning of the year fundraiser earning $2,174. We were also selected as a raffle winner from the Horace Mann Foundation and received a check for $1,000 with no strings attached. The money will go towards bringing community day representers, outstanding student of the month field trips, uh, PBIS reinforces, raffle prizes, uh, supporting students with field trip costs and other activities that directly impact students. And our September outstanding staff and students were recognized at Community Day. So congratulations to sixth grade, Tony Rivera, seventh grade, Jacob Romero, eighth grade, Ryan Reno, and staff, Mrs. Melissa Lambert. During October, SMS has set up a booing display in the teacher's room. Each staff member is represented by their name on a ghost. When someone gets booed, they receive a small Halloween-themed surprise and then select another staff member to boo. Moving on to SHS, the uh, National Honor Society induction was held Thursday, October 24th. 15 new members were inducted into the organization and I'd just like to give a thank you to the officers for putting it together. In September, we recognized Dana Dyer as our student of the month and Ms. Sanborn as our staff member of the month. These are nominated and voted monthly in our community. Our fall sports are wrapping up. Volleyball had their first playoff game Wednesday, 6 p.m. at home. Volleyball has one more game on Friday night before playoffs, which will start next week. Soccer's all finished up, and winter sports are right around the corner. Spirit Week and Homecoming was October 14th through the 18th. We had class contests and dress-up days all culminating in our Spirit Week assembly and homecoming dance. This afternoon, 
the uh, Summersworth Public Library held their Halloween celebration. Students at Summersworth High School volunteered to help uh, host booths and stations for younger kids in the community. That we all. Thank you. That's why parking was so difficult this evening. Now I <laughs> yes, know. Yes, it was. Now, Th Thomas, we have four student um, representatives, Thomas, Nina Souza, and two others from each grade level. Um, you are very welcome. You are a school board member like the rest of us, just without the ability to vote and be a non-public, um, to be able to elevate your voice and be a representative of your student body, of the district, and of the community. So if there's anything you would like to know or be involved in for the betterment of our community, your voice is very valuable, and um, I speak for the board, you're very welcome in this role. So um, this evening, we do not have a lot to talk about. There's no presentation. We have one policy for adoption. It's a short one, but next month will be um, Summersworth High School presentation, so more, kind of more information and maybe more discussion. So you'll see those agenda and materials beforehand. Any questions, reach out to me or anyone else on the board, and again, welcome. We are. I'm very happy that you're here. I think the rest of the board is very grateful as well to be able to hear your voice and your perspective on things. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Thomas. All right, moving to agenda item 4.2, our superintendent's report. You have to follow the student. So. Yes, thanks, Chair Larson, yeah. and thank you, Thomas. Uh, covered a couple of my things as well, which is awesome. I have seven items. Uh, number one, the Personnel and Negotiations Committee met earlier this evening, just as a heads up. The uh, SESPA, the Summersworth Educational Support Personnel Association, which is our 19 wonderful custodial and maintenance crew members, um, we're going to be negotiating a new contract with them uh, for 2025 through 2028. Hopefully have that wrapped up by January, um, but we had a good preliminary meeting and, and look forward to good conversations with that group. Uh, number two, just a thank you uh, to the Finance Committee of the City Council and to the City Council for the unanimous support. Um, Katie and I did a couple different presentations to get the approval for the supplemental appropriation of our additional state adequacy revenue totaling $262,265. Um, and it, it was good to have the City Council's support um, both in the vote and in the sp and in spirit in those meetings. It was very much appreciated. Uh, number three, a reminder that Tuesday, November 5th, um, election day. Um, there'll be no school that day. It is a teacher workshop day. We're going to make sure all our teachers and paraeducators have an opportunity to vote. And we certainly hope everybody in the community uh, does with a lot at both the state and federal level um, going on right now. And Monday, November 11th um, is a school holiday for teachers um, and students, everybody, for Veterans Day. Uh, of course, that's Armistice Day, uh, originally known for marking the end of World War One, November 11th, 1918. Um, I believe all of our, I know all of our schools are doing different things. Uh, Thomas alluded to the presentation at Elhurst, um, but all of our schools will be recognizing Veterans Day in different ways. Fourth, uh, just a heads up that I met with the superintendents in Dover and Rochester and surrounding areas that participate in our CTC, um, our Tri-City CTC agreement, which actually extends beyond Dover, Summersworth, and Rochester on the 2025-26 school year calendar um, because we seek to keep the days that are misaligned under 10 and I think we'll be closer to five this year which is good but just uh, we will be looking to bring a 25-26 school year calendar to the school board as early as uh, December 10th and hopefully have that approved in January. Um, Number five, just an update, especially since it's been in the newspaper a little bit late, uh, a little bit of late, the Rollinsford School District, SAU 104, has completed a feasibility study as to whether or not it would be economically and logistically possible to have their own uh, part-time superintendent and some uh, central office staff or hybrid version of a central office staff. Um, those deliberations are happening now. Um, I know that Rollinsford is hopeful they'll be able to pull this off. They have until January 1st to let us know whether they wish to amend um, or cancel our contractual services agreement, um, which is about $230,000 of annual revenue this year and involves about 10 or 11 of our central office staff um, working with Rollinsford. Um, so just a heads up on that. Um, I'll mention NEAS quickly, just since I was in Bedford today. Um, the New England Association of Schools and Colleges is the accreditation body that will be doing a collaborative conference visit to the high school. Um, I think Chris, among, Chris Tebow, among other things, will hit on this in his high school presentation. 
but schools are accredited by choice every 10 years. Uh, the New England Association of Schools and Colleges does uh, colleges and universities in New England, and high schools in New England also does international schools in some other states. Um, this is a decision that we make um, to, to, to be accredited. Um, it is not a requirement, um, but it's something we participated in. And so in April, um, the, the high school faculty and staff will have been doing a lot of review. I think it's a healthy process because it's basically all the things that are important into being a good educational program from facilities and safety to student wellness to curriculum and resources. It's a good checklist and revisit of where we are as a school. So that is coming up. And I just was invited to sit on the visiting committee for Bedford High School. And, and Bedford, New Hampshire is just going through the same process we'll be going through in April. I think it's a healthy one, um, but time consuming. Um, the, uh, a reminder given that uh, it snowed in Bedford yesterday. I don't, it didn't snow here, but it, it came down pretty good. So uh, a heads up, uh, we have a meeting uh, at the city level um, coordinated by the Department of Public Works uh, tomorrow morning just to kind of review uh, winter procedures. So 5.45 a.m. will be our deadline. Uh, we will hope to notify you no later than 5.45 a.m. via school messenger, which will be email, text, voice, whatever you've signed up for. Uh, WMUR will also list us, and, and they'll know by 5.45 a.m. and hopefully get it out there soon. And we're hoping also to post it on our website this year, too, for folks who want to check the school website, which will never say no school today. It'll say the date and very precisely um, where this can cancellation is, whether it's two, day, two hour delay or cancellation, whether it's ice or snow or flooding or weather or power outages. Um, so that process is in place. And lastly, I just wanted to um, say I very much enjoyed the National Honor Society induction. Um, you know, the big schools have some advantages and I was just at one today and yesterday. Um, small schools have some really awesome advantages too. And that includes a National Honor Society induction where current members take the time to introduce the new members one at a time in detail, pretty passionately, and oftentimes very good friends. It was a really, really, really wonderful ceremony. And I just want to do a, sh uh, a quick shout out to just, uh, you know, that um, a lot of great stuff, National Honor Society among it, and, uh, and our football team, um, tough loss on Friday night, but just the spirit behind it, the community behind it. But there's a lot of um, kids that are hurting in this community, and we've had a good stretch uh, in terms of days uh, where Officer South, uh, working with the state and DCYF and paraeducators going above and beyond and working four or five, six hours beyond uh, their contracts to be at places taking care of kids. Um, there's pretty remarkable, remarkable. We're not perfect all the time, but the time and spirit and energy that go into the kids that are sometimes the most vulnerable and the most hurting um, is pretty remarkable in this school. And I think we have the full spectrum of uh, uh, seeing uh, our National Honor Society kids and highest achieving kids go off to do great things and, and planning to apply to four competitive four-year colleges and also a lot of uh, students who are just kind of taking it a day at a time and getting everything they can and it's a it's a testament to our faculty and staff um, who are dealing with it all in uh, with a lot of heart and uh, a lot of intelligence and commitment so I just wanted to make sure that was known and our school resource officer, I think, is probably the best school resource officer um, on the planet, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> and the Summersworth Police Department, we work with regularly in so many ways. Just uh, want to make sure everybody knows that. We have some really good relationships with the city. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. We do have the best school resource. I think I'll put that up publicly. Yeah. Officer South is the best, and our students and community are one thing about us. We are, we are small. I think I knew the majority of the NHS, and I know the majority looking around of, you know, knowing um, a lot of the student reps since they were little. And I think that's kind of in our favor. We, we, we show up. We show up for people in our community and we know each other without being a too, too, too small, but, and we remember what really is important and that's kind of um, serving our neighbors in a, in a positive way. Wonderful, all right. Uh, no business administrator report that'll be at our meeting in November. Um, our city council update. Welcome, Councillor Parody Canzaro. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for bearing with me as I was a little bit late. Um, very brief update. As uh, the superintendent mentioned, uh, I'm happy to report that the city council did vote to approve the funding requests. Um, 
I believe that vote was unanimous, right? Um, and everyone that spoke up was just basically saying, yes, we support this. Yes, this is a school's fund, school funds. Um, it should go back to the school. And they also appreciated that there was some transparency around the intent of the use, although we don't have control over that. Um, and I did also just want to share an update about the water tower, since it was something we discussed at the last meeting. Um, we did vote to move forward with designs around one of the locations, which was the location closest to the current water tower. Um, and it will be going through all of the regular planning board stuff. We did bring up art on it. And so that is something that they're starting to think about. Um, but there will be plenty of opportunities for community input around the color <laughs> and various um, aesthetic aspects of it. Um, and I asked about the the existing water tower as well. I know that was a question and th that's sort of built into their process. They don't know if it'll be like a month, six months, but it'll be part of the process once the new water tank is up and running, then they'll be dismantling and removing the older water tank. So just wanted to share those updates as we had a couple questions. Um, I think that's it. Thank you. And I think we're early for the budget season, but I welcome and um, as budget chair um, counselors to come, to, you know, to budget meetings. And as the formation kind of happens, they'll reach out more with that because we're we're not quite there yet, but more in the in the winter, um, January and February. So we'll extend that. But thank you. I'm very close to that water tower. So I'm glad. That's cool. Thank you. 20 feet away. All right. Um, great water pressure on the hilltop. Let's say, uh, all right, so committee reports, uh, standing committee, uh, budget and revenue. Um, we haven't, we haven't met. We, we already met, we'll be meeting in uh, November 4th. Our first meeting was just the, our SAU budget and uh, we'll be able to kind of share more with that um, later. Um, we haven't really gotten fully into budget season yet, but we'll be moving along with that. But uh, Building Grounds and Transportation Committee, uh, Board Member de St. Croix, you do have our first update. I do. So we met today. Um, we talked about the summer projects. We talked about the SAU. The heating system has been updated. Um, Idlehurst, um, we talked about they sealed the playground in the front. They sealed the grounds um, for the playground. At the middle school, um, the kitchen has the new equipment and the project is nearing completion, which is really great. Um, the high school, um, I know everybody knows about the weep holes. They think that they've solved the problem. So the weep holes, they um, have sealed them up and Mason has sealed them up. So we're hoping that that works. Um, hopefully when we get our next rainstorm, we'll see, but they're hoping that everything is all set with those. Um, the AED machines have been added to all of the schools and on all of the floors, um, as well as the SAU. Um, the grounds position has been working very well, and they actually used um, the little quote, he took the bull by the horns and he's doing an amazing job. So that's awesome. Um, we've also talked about security. Security, they've worked on some stuff and they're continuing to work on more. So as of right now, that's what we have. And we'll be meeting again on November 18th at five o'clock and we'll be at the high school and the middle school. Wonderful, thank you. All right, uh, ed programs, community outreach. I don't believe you've met, but you'll be meeting November 19th, right before our school board meeting. Yep. Um, the eyes on 30, but more import importantly, I think we have an arts and culture update for the first meeting. Yes, so um, please report yesterday was our first meeting, the new ad hoc committee of the uh, arts and culture. Um, we spoke, I spoke with um, Miles Burns, the course and band theater teacher uh, at the high school. And I will just share, um, I, we are very lucky to have um, Miles at our school district. He is a sort of legendary um, Seacoast theater person and a very like world-class level artist. Um, so when I learned recently that Miles was in our school district, I was blown away. I did also grow up with him, um, but I'm not biased, I swear to God. Um, but Miles had a lot of great things to share about kind of like our current um, programs and, and some needs. One thing we talked about 
was a need for an after school bus for kids who want to be participating in any sort of a extracurricular activity but really can't due to transportation needs. Um, and that perhaps there was a bus, after school bus in the past, um, but there isn't one currently. So we discussed that would be a wonderful thing. We talked a little bit about um, the endowment from Dr. Tully. Those of you who don't know, Dr. Tully was the band and uh, chorus, or the, the band teacher for many years, um, and upon his passing created an endowment basically to fund uh, projects and, and programming for the band and chorus, which is incredible. Um, and Miles said that was going really well. Um, we talked a lot about the need for students to be able to see art other places um, and needing to take field trip, wanting to take field trips to go and see plays and see music and be a part of uh, competitions and things like this to help boost engagement, but also really inspiration for young folks to see, like if you really can't see what it looks like to be in a large scale production, it's hard for you to um, have interest in that. and. And that, you know, when you when they have more opportunities like that, he finds there's more kids auditioning for programs. Um, yeah, we talked about different ways of finding more funding uh, from the State Council for the Arts, opportunities to get the Artisan Residency Grant that the State Council offers annually to start um, looking into that as a sort of uh, ongoing program for the school district to bring master classes in to the school district. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to the next time we're going to meet to hopefully have more folks, uh, more art teachers coming, because um, I think a main goal of the committee is really just cohesion of all of the art teachers, whether it's visual art, performing art, whatever, to really connect the dots so that folks um, in Summersworth, whether they're from kindergarten all the way to 12th grade, um, are getting like a really robust creative education. Thank you so much. Um, not to put you on the spot, Thomas, but do you have experience with Mr. Burns? And I know there's a guitar um, collective class going on. If you could just speak to that for a second. Uh, yeah, he's phenomenal. He's my fourth block teacher right now in Guitar One, one of many classes. He's doing a music theory class um, next semester as well. But exactly what you said, he's he's brilliant and he's not even a guitar player like he's truly a pianist in the amount that he's helped me to grow as, not only as a guitarist but just in music as well as yeah exceptional i he, was i was walking through and kind of saw like the guitar kind of class going and, and in the black box which was kind of like a great place to be able to have space and not have it be under neon lights and be able to play but this is our first guitar class yeah, i believe in summersworth if we, so it's it's um to have that in theory and kind of build on that i mean um it's just great to be able to support. So thank you for that and look forward. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, on that note too, we talked about um, the CTC and uh, Caitlin Carrington's like support of anything Miles has like needed equipment, musical instruments, the guitars in particular that the CTC, she's been incredible about sourcing whatever they need. Um, so just a testament again to the CTC and, and what it is able to offer is very new to the school district. Great, thank you, wonderful, thank you. All right, moving to policy, Board Member Brown, thank you. Good evening, we just had our meeting this evening at 545 at the high school. Our next meeting is November 12th, and I believe it's going to be at the SAU 56 district office, and I'm getting a nod of Kat saying yes. Uh, so, because we just held our meeting, I don't have a written report that made it into the packet, but we have, for first reading, um, and second, and some second readings, and then uh, um, I'll hold those because those are under policy adoption. But at our meeting today, we did pass um, out of committee to the full board for first reading at the next school uh, board meeting, policy IHBCA, which is accommodation of pregnancy and related medical conditions, colon students. And the theme that we've had with many of these policies has been the Title IX coordinator, which is CAT. <laughs> so this um, policy IHBCA also has involvement of the Title IX coordinator. The other policy, 
And thank you, I forget, was it Education Programs Community Outreach that recommended that we re review policy EFAA? Mm -hmm. And policy EFAA is the Student Food Service Meal Payment Charging Meal Account Management. Mm -hmm. And so um, that will be coming to you for um, first reading at, at the next, uh, next uh, board meeting. Um, so I can discuss those in with a report in the next packet to tell you what um, elements were changed, et cetera, in those two policies. That's good. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you, Board Member Brown. Yeah, we had those, I think we're moving right along. It's the first half of the year that's really busy with policy. So we have no presentations this evening, um, but for policy adoption, we have one policy to um, vote on this evening. Um, and that's ACF Food and Nutrition Services Anti-Discrimination and Civil Rights Complaint. So this is our only one, oh, sorry, sorry, one to introduce to the board, our first reading, is ACF Food and Nutrition Services um, Anti-Discrimination and Civil Rights. Do I have a motion to, um, this, that's it. I mean, we don't actually need a motion. We just have any discussion or questions about this. Um, we're, we're going through priority required by law policies, so there's not a lot of, um, wiggle room legally, but if there's any comments on this, let us know. Any changes, let us know before our next board meeting. Um, I'll just jump into 7.2, our second reading for adoption. And I think we'll do it, we'll ask, I'll ask for a um, motion to read these by title only. And I'm going to ask to vote um, on each one, not as a uh, collective, just because there's so many this evening. Can I ask a point of clarification on our first reading? Do Am I forgetting that we don't usually do a, f a first reading of by title only? We we do. It's one of those things like title only, or if, if to to introduce it to the board. I mean, I don't I don't I remember us reading maybe two policies over the last seven years in in full, and one was ac like the academic um, the academic one. But we can we can read it by title. We can read the whole thing. If we I like. think that's what we've done in the past, is we've motioned to read it by title, unless you want her to read it in its entirety. No, no. Okay. Just no. So we should probably, so the yeah, public can hear it. Motion. Yeah. yeah, so I motion to read the policy. By For title. first reading, food and nutrition services, anti-discrimination and civil rights complaints by title only. I'll second. Can I read right. it by title? I mean, yes, <laughs> you. you have to go for um, it. So policy AS, ACF is food and nutrition services, colon, anti-discrimination and civil rights complaints. Okay. All right. So no motion to adopt or move on, but this will be up for second reading. Okay. So for second reading, um, I would like a motion for each. Um, I would like a motion for all of them to read by title only, unless anyone objects to that. Um, we have a motion to read all of the... I'll make a motion to read um, policies A, C, N, A, D, B, G, B, A, M, and J, L, D, B, B by titles only. Okay. I second. Wonderful. And in the title, um, read by title only, it'll be reading the title and then making a motion to approve it in a second, and I and will go through it. Okay. Board Member Brown. So ahead. the first policy for second reading and adoption is policy A, C, N, Accommodation of lactation needs. Okay, do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Policy Second. Is presented. Okay. Second. All right. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right. ACN adopted. All right. Second one. Policy ADB drug free workplace slash drug free schools. Okay. There were no changes to this policy as shown on our agenda. Do I have a motion to? Uh, reaffirm and approve this as presented. I'll make a motion to reaffirm and approve policy ADB. Thank you. Second? I second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Say aye. 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 ADB ab adopted. All right. G I'll read the next uh, policy by title. Uh, GBAM, which is accommodation of pregnancy and related conditions, colon, personnel. Right. Do I have a motion to adopt? GBA. Motion to approve policy GBAM as presented. Okay, second. second. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, wonderful. And then finally. Last policy is JLDBB, Suicide Prevention and Response Plan. Okay. 
I motion. make a motion to adopt this policy as presented. Yes, I second. Okay. Wonderful. All in favor, say aye. 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 Right. And point of clarity, after these, these are now um, active, you know, as of tomorrow, will be communicated out to the school as, as their active policies for the school to be, be aware of. So um, I appreciate everyone's work on this. There's no new business and no old business. We have future meeting dates, um, budget and revenue, November 4th, our policy, November 12th, ed meetings, November 19th, our next board meeting and only board meeting in November is November 19th at seven o'clock. Then our only board meeting in December is the 10th. We will make up for it with all the board meetings in the winter. Um, and that's it. And then our next one, our first one of the years on the 14th. So, so just think about this. Everything to be introduced to the board needs a first presentation. So we just don't get something and adopt it. We need a time to look over it as a first or a second. It happens with policies and it happens with any other changes we do, unless it's emergency and we need to waive rules to be able to adopt something. So when you look at the amount of um, meetings that we have in your committees, just make sure that you, you know, we kind of really slow down come May, unless we really need to um, approve something. So any comments by visitors this evening? All right. Comments by board members? Oh. <laughs> Barbara, you're already out the door. All right. Any comments by board members? No, we do not have a non public this evening. So I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn at 7 Motion to adjourn at 7 30. Okay. All, all in favor say aye. 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 All right. Perfect. Aye.